this is what happens when you delay a game more than once now and instead of just completely giving up on that game and cancelling that game last minute pulling the plug like every single developer seems to be doing for Nintendo Switch Avalanche have basically said no we want our game on the Switch we are gonna put it on the Switch with an insane amount of talent and work going into it and this game on the Switch especially really brought back memories, nostalgic memories of Harry Potter way back on the PlayStation 1 when I used to play them back then. It brought back all of those memories of those games on PS1. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Because the way this game performs and works, it reminded me of those games back then. This game on Switch though has exceeded all of my expectations. With an original story, you create your own character and set out in this wizarding world as a fifth year student at Hogwarts, set in the 1800s. Then getting sorted into one of the four houses from Gryffindor, Slytherin, Ravenclaw or Hufflepuff, which will offer you your own unique quests common rooms and interactions with students and teachers as you embark on your magical adventure unlocking and discovering this world's hidden secrets. As you grow plants, learn spells, cast spells, upgrade your skills and fly your broom and magical beasts facing off against trolls, dog wizards, goblins, spiders and more solving puzzles and doing challenges along the way as well. And this game as a whole, I do think it's an extremely pleasant surprise at how this game plays on Switch. A system that's pretty old by this point and nowhere near the power of a next-gen system. But saying that though, this game can now be played on all platforms with a world filled with magic to explore as we take Hogwarts with us wherever we go. We will never miss a class again. They didn't want to do a cloud version here, they didn't want to release it as a broken mess, no. So they delayed it countless times to get it right, to make sure it was right. Even if that was at the cost of a few things here and there, that to me is worth the sacrifices. And if you have been waiting for this version, holding out from the other versions to get it for the Switch, you won't be disappointed at all picking this up for the Switch. And while there has been a lot of cutbacks to get this running on the Switch, and before we get into this, because there's a lot, Hogwarts Legacy is another impossible port that's been made possible for Switch. But what ruins this version for me is that we have already experienced another version of this game but if this was the only version out there and we knew nothing else to compare it with, then we really wouldn't care because this is all we know. And again, if you have been holding out for the Nintendo Switch version of Hogwarts Legacy, then it's absolutely worth it. And you won't be disappointed because you won't care. You have nothing else to compare it with. This is your soul version of the game and yes it's limited by the switch's hardware we already knew that we already knew this going into this that it would be limited it would have drawbacks it wouldn't look as pretty it will be a lower spec game from the other versions that's expected at this point we can't be disappointed by that at this point but with that being said though, this game is pretty rough around the edges. There's no denying that. It can come across blurry at times with things in the environment looking flat with less detail and these flickering shadows with little to no aliasing with low res textures as well. When you get up close to things and really look at them, you will see how low res those textures are. Most cutscenes as well seem to be all rendered in-game, while others seem to be pre-rendered movies, pre-rendered videos that make them look better than the in-game cutscenes because they don't suffer from the lack of anti-aliasing everywhere else. But there's these moments that will wow you. The draw distance. While it isn't as great as the other versions, you look in the distance and you'll see 
students flying around the castle. There isn't an issue there where they'll be moving at one frame per second. They'll just be naturally flying around the castle in the distance. And things will still happen in the distance that you can see pretty clearly as well that aren't just moving at a few pixels per second. And it just makes you go, wow, at what is possible with this game on Switch. Parts of the world that still look amazing to witness, even on this system. And now we get down to the water effects, the reflections, and how it all comes together. The water stutters as you move, but it doesn't look as good as it should when it comes to the water effects. It just looks like they've done half a job getting the water Right, and this really does show when you are flying around and you see it from a height. So there is little things here and there that aren't quite right, that are a bit of a miss. And there's also just some absolute horrible textures with the hairstyles, and it seems they have really struggled to get the hair right. It's just been downgraded drastically. Everything has been reduced. But seeing that at the same time, it still feels like Hogwarts Legacy. You still feel the magic of this world. There is drawbacks and pretty much everything has seen a hit somewhere. What hasn't taken any hit at all though is the gameplay, the combat, the flying around. That is all still perfectly in place with no worries at all. All of the loading screens as well, connecting these open areas before entering towns there's a loading screen. Before entering any stores or buildings or Hogsmeade, there's a loading screen. Or even entering different areas of Hogwarts, there will be a few seconds of loading to load in that next area. That does somewhat take you out of the overall seamless experience that it is elsewhere. And this does somewhat impact the flow of what was meant to be this open world game. Now the decision to split up areas will have been made to improve performance and overall stability with the Switch. It's still that very same Harry Potter Hogwarts Legacy RPG that it was set out to be. Which is all good, the gameplay is all good, still incredible, still fast, still fluid, still impressive still works exactly the same. Now, the characters, the world overall, with lighting and shadows from the other versions of the game are non-existent in this version, with some areas looking a bit more rougher, a bit more blurry, and a bit more jagged with some of the areas. The big focused areas still look so impressive. They still look really, really good. While the focus was clearly on making sure those areas still look incredible. Also, things in the environment around you. Objects and things in the distance just looking like these muddy, pixelated, low frame rate messes until you get closer for them to load in properly. Also on occasion, this game will suffer from minor pop-ins and little graphical hiccups where things will just appear right in front of you, be it other characters or textures or lights or just something in the environment, an object that's meant to be there and it will randomly pop in as you get closer. This does happen from time to time. There's also a very noticeable drop in texture quality as well. Loading times are roughly around 30 to 50 seconds. Sometimes the loading screen just seems to be never ending. It just seems to be stuck there and you're just watching in the corner. It seems like an eternity. Now, when flying around on my broom, this was when I thought we would see some more noticeable and quite drastic problems with frame rate drops. And while I did see more things popping in in the environment, as I flied around quite fast, quite rapidly, the frame rate seemed to stay consistent at a consistent 30 frames per second. But occasionally there is dips, there is drops, depending on the area that you are in. But for the most part, it does stay at a consistent 30 frames per second. And if you guys are looking for your next big Switch adventure, then look no further than Hogwarts Legacy.
it's the perfect gift for this holiday season. It's the perfect game for Nintendo Switch to dive into if you have completed Tears of the Kingdom, Super Mario Wonder. Well, Super Mario RPG is out now, so you could be diving into that alongside Hogwarts Legacy. But this is that next game if you are looking for your next big adventure on Switch. Look no further than Hogwarts Legacy on this system. Don't be disheartened by the reviews, by the way it looks, because it performs really good and it plays pretty excellent. And I am, again, pleasantly surprised by this. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you for making me a part of your day and checking out my videos. Thank you. Anyways, guys, I'll see you next time.